Joey Buckets? The God. Yeah, we back. Another episode of Hoops World. I'm with Chubbs, yes, Julian, Rage. So we got some breaking news. We're going to talk about Russell Westbrook to the Clippers. We're going to talk about Patrick Beverly to the Bulls. And then we're going to talk about Kevin Love to Miami Heat. Appreciate y'all joining us. Please hit that like button for us. So Russell Westbrook has been traded. Well, not traded. Oh, I'm bugging. Has been signed. <laughs> my bad, y'all. Signed uh, on the buyout. He was brought out by the Utah Jazz, and he signed with the Clippers. We th- we saw a couple of people, like, a couple teams wanted Russ. A couple teams wanted Russ. You know, the Bulls, Crazy. I think, were interested in Russ. Who else was interested in Russ? Guys, you know? He. He. Miami, he were interested in Russ. Um, but. I'm a, my first re- reaction to it. I'm gonna go my first reaction to the him signing with the Clippers. I didn't think the Clippers needed to do this. I thought the Clippers were a very deep team. Just added Bones Highland Gordon. And I'm like, you guys, I think it's good. I think it's good enough. I think Norman Powell, like they're so deep of a team. I'm like, this Russ factor is I don't know if they needed to do this. But at the other hand, I know the, the Clippers fans said they needed a traditional point guard or a pass first point guard. Or, or some type of point guard on the Clippers. And I'm like, it is Rat Russ, though? Because Russ is more like a turnover kind of. Is he a legit point guard? Let me ask that question for you. No, nah, turnover Russ, point guard is crazy. He, <laughs> he's definitely he a, not pass first. Like, even though he averaged a triple double, he's definitely not. He's like, a score for his point guard, right? But this um, is what the Clippers yeah. try to do with John Wall. So let me know what y'all think about this. Like, can Russ turn the leaf and Bro. be a traditional point guard for the Clippers? Exactly. This is the only way it works. It's the only Bro, way it works, in my this opinion. This man is 33, 34 years old, right? Yeah. And at the end of the day, this is very similar and or identical to the Lakers getting him, in my opinion. It's like uh, time and time again, like a lot of teams don't understand, you can't just you can't just throw talent together like it doesn't work like that, especially if it doesn't fit. Russ is not a pass first point guard, even though he averaged a triple double, right? Yeah. Like he he's not he he's not really like an all time great playmaker, despite him averaging ten assists. Like he's yeah. definitely a good passer, good play, but he doesn't go to it first. Number one, and even when he does go to it, it's not going to change the whole you know thing of your team if you're missing playmaking. Like it's not going to happen. So you think the Clippers reached with this move, or you think it was more? Hell like- yeah. All right, go ahead, Rich. What's your take on Russ signing with the Clippers? Uh, Honestly, I don't, like, mind the move because now, at least, like, if he starts playing bad, you can just bench him and you're not paying him a ton of money because at least with the buyout, you're not – like I said, you're not the Lakers paying him $46 million to come off the bench or just to, you know, play a negative part. What's his contract? I'm confused. I I didn't know that part about it. I don't think the the detail of the contract released yet, but – I'm I'm assuming it's either a vet min for one year or it's a two year deal. I'm for not that. for not forty six million. Then yeah, like it's not. Yeah, yeah you, yeah. you could just mention. So you're getting it on a bargain. Like if you do have this for one year, like a rental kind of thing. Yeah, it's not too much of a risk, but it's just like mm, it could go wrong. You know, it definitely. Could. Yeah, it's but like at, but at least the, at least like if you get to that point, you can just like I said, you can just bench them. You can yeah. just do that because you're not paying them a ton of money, and you know. It's at the end of the day, it's you're still a professional. So I mean, even if you're playing bad enough, you got to realize that maybe it is best for the team that you said. Because see, I yeah. would, I would need. Go ahead. Well, I'm gonna say, according to reports, um, Woj was reporting that Russ wouldn't get on the team. He wouldn't sign with the Clippers unless he started. So there was some <laughs> type of like, yeah, bro. That that let some, gar- some guarantee that, let- that he was gonna help um, play a part in contending. That, yeah. But that's how you know right there where his mindset is, bro. And, and I would have to really to, – to have, like, to, from, from my opinion, to be, like, set in stone, I would really have to know, like, what that contract is like. But obviously because, he's good enough. He's good He's good enough to contribute. Like, he's not all the way terrible. Like, he's so okay. You know, he can still – I don't know, bro. So. Like, I feel like he was good enough to contribute with the Lakers, but even when it was him, Braun, and AD, it just didn't – they have better players than, than the Lakers did, though. They definitely yeah. do. Yeah, and yeah, I, I feel like I feel like there's a little bit more of a pressure off of his shoulders now that he's on the Clippers rather than like the Lakers because it's it, there's always going to be a different type of pressure when you're playing with LeBron and coming with with the Lakers fan base and the LeBron fan base. It really won't mix well because you saw like 
like you can honestly like compare it to like how Kyle Kuzma did because everyone was kind of you know they were kind of on the bandwagon of yo Kyle Kuzma's bad this and that blah 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 and dissing him but then you look and see him on a different team and you're like hmm maybe he wasn't that terrible after all yeah um let me read the report real quick it says here the Clippers became increasingly interested with Westbrook as team officials including coach Ty Lu and president of basketball operations Lawrence Frank um, centered around discussions, Westbrook's willingness to fit into a clear and specific role with the Clippers built around his playmaking, rebounding, and toughness, sources said. So, yeah, I guess that's kind of like... No, no. I'll bro. read that in. I don't, I don't think he fits, bro. I don't think he, like... He he can rebound, too. See, see the triple-double the, the triple double season, bro. Like, I watched a lot of those games, and, like, I hate to bring out the S word, but he did stat pad a lot of those stats. Like, I definitely still think he's good enough naturally where he can give you, like, seven and seven. But, like, I would see Steven Adams, like, give him the rebound legitimately. I'm pretty sure you can find some of those clips on YouTube, like, a lot of them. So, once again, like, he he's definitely... I, I wouldn't say that he's like a really good rebounder, especially at this point in his career for a guard. That is right. Yeah. Cause he can't jump as high. He's not as athletic. Like, I don't know. We'll have to see, but I don't think he perfectly like fits what they were trying to get is all I'm saying. Go ahead. Charles. I know Charles won't get in here. Yeah. yeah um, I like when, when the contract buyout news came out, I was under the impression he was going to sign to a place kind of like Miami. In a sense, you know, probably like a Miami, probably Chicago. I think he more so Miami. I think he fit them a little better because um, overall he he can control most of the offense over there as opposed to the Clippers. You're kind of running into a situation where it's almost identical to the Lakers in a sense. Yeah, Kawhi and PG need the ball in their hands to truly operate. You can make a, a – an argument that Kawhi can move off ball, PG can move off ball, but more so if you generally just watch how they play, they get most of the points with the balls, put the ball in their hand. Yeah. And not for nothing with, with Westbrook, he is a player where he has to control the offense has or to, yeah, he, has he has to, to be to. the one, he has to be the initiator. It's just not going to look good if you're generally going to try and, uh, that's why he has to start. Well, like that, there was a reason. Like, but wouldn't that like because if they just have Terrence Mann has been amazing this year. Well, not amazing, but um, he's been really good in that role for the Clippers. Mm -hmm. Like, he hasn't been a, a traditional point guard, but he's kind of been like a kind of prototype. Like they're trying to like mold him kind of into that that point guard. But this is before they even got Russ, so it's like you take right. that away and. Are you going to put that to the bench, or are you going to bring Russ off the bench to let him have control of the old thing or the second well, unit? Well, well, AJ, this goes to what I've been talking about before we went live. They never really needed a point guard. Like, let, let's really be honest. Look at most of the Clippers' runs in the playoffs where they came up short. It was more so their own doing, or they weren't healthy enough to get past the opposition. If Kawhi was there for the playoffs versus that Sun Series, I guarantee you they would have been in the finals we've been talking yeah. about the runs yeah. like and if you look at Kawhi's stats he was having a historic, one of the best a historic, historic run historic historic. one final. of the best scoring offensive sp splits all of that ever go ahead yeah nah so and on top of that I think the Clippers kind of subscribe to the ideology that you know certain teams where you got guys that can create their own shot like as a one-two punch they need a a point guard back a point guard i don't think it's that i think you can work around that with coaching schemes and all that and on top of that i think specifically paul george can be a good enough he's shown he can be a good enough playmaker when when the chips yeah, fall on the table yeah. so i don't think it's too much of a ask to say you know what pg you can you can play and make if, if necessary i don't think yeah i agree i didn't think it was that much of a need to where you gotta pull off a splash move like this or even a previous move like when they signed rondo yeah bro yeah. Like, and, and with i want clippers like, fans to put that in the in the comments too when y'all watch this um what you guys think like what would you guys do you think the, the clippers reached with this point guard move that you guys even needed a point guard or you thought terrence Mann and the uh, recent equation of um bones highland was good enough for the Clippers at point guard position. And you got PG again, like Chubbs was saying, part-time point guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. Like, go ahead, Julian. Go ahead, with, with, with Russ, like, it's, it's similar with LeBron where, like, 
you're running the offense, but you're like kind of. I mean, I think it's fair to say that that he's like a a not great decision maker. Like he's an all time great player, but as a point guard, like he just he's just not a good decision maker. And if you're taking touches away from people like Kawhi and Paul George, I just don't really like. I felt that way on the Lakers. It's like, why are you, you know, one of the one of their big faults last year is LeBron. Russ had to be the the, the point guard, right? And so LeBron yeah. was he went to center and LeBron can score at center. Right. But he can't defend at center. So it's like, why I'm looking at the situation. Like LeBron is, is head, head and shoulders, uh, uh, a better playmaker, a better oh, decision yeah. maker. I was one of yeah. the best passes of all time. Like he's, yeah, he's like, he has that God given passing ability. And, like. and, and you're getting so many, so many touches that I would love, you know, to go to LeBron or AD. And I feel like this is a similar situation where like, I would much rather, Kawhi Leonard have the ball in his hands, you know, for for the duration or PG for the duration that you're gonna have. I don't know, maybe you can, but see the I, but that right there of just, oh, I need to be starting just kind of lets me know, like Russ, bro, you're 34, like your your stock really didn't go up like when you were on the Lakers, you know. And I don't know, I mean, I don't know, he could prove us wrong, but right now, I just I don't know, bro. I don't think he that fits him, bro. I think he needs to be the main guy. You know, like yeah. for for him to work or have another player. All right, but, let me ask y'all this, because we'll for the Clippers fans, we'll think about the positives and the negatives of Russ um, adding him to the team. Then we'll move on to the next guy. Um, so I guess the positives of Russ is if they're playmaking, if he turns into um, strictly pass first point guard, he like he said, he accepts his role, he comes off the bench, and he doesn't. Um, I guess you know, cause you know how Russ is kind of like an accident waiting to happen with the turnovers. Yeah. It's like really, really bad. Like you got to reduce his turnovers a bunch. If that's the positive look outlook of this, like if he falls into that kind of role, I guess that would be a positive if I'm a Clippers fan. And then the negative is this could self destruct. Russ is a cancer to every organization. This is his 15, 15 and what five years, yeah, or, or something like that. It, it, it could be a, a disaster and it can hurt the Clippers. <laughs> And they won't win this year. Like, and then what do y'all other? You guys have any negatives for that? I don't think that Russ is like a locker room cancer. I just think that he just he's not versatile like that, bro. Like, you can't like you see people like Kyrie and KD, and you know, one of one of the, one of their best traits is that they're extreme. They can literally they've proven that they can fit anywhere and. Yeah bro like russ is just not that so it's like you add him and then he he's not really in the right mindset especially at this point in his career with playing with the players who he's playing with the players he's playing with and then the mindset doesn't match up with the skill set you know like it's just so much like it's just so much that's going wrong at this point in his career, bro. And I just, I don't know, bro. I'm not really feeling yeah. it, bro. To me, I, I think, like it. I said, I'm an, uh, I'm not a Clippers fan at all. But I wouldn't. Have, I think I thought they were good enough to do, yeah. to win the chip without him. That's yeah. just something my else. opinion. Yeah. All right. Well, so we'll we'll go to the next guy, um, Kevin Love. Kevin Love. We saw Kevin Love on the buyout. The buyout market was packed, by the way. Kevin Love, um, went to the um, Miami Heat. How do you guys feel? I mean, does that move the needle for the Heat? Not move the needle, but mm-hmm. does it help them kind of change? You know, they've been going through struggles, kind of been in that mid-tier kind of level. So does that kind of push them forward, or is that just a he doesn't do nothing for that Bulls team? So, I'll say the Miami Heat, the Miami Heat team. And this is my thing with the Heat the whole time. They, they are a victim to their own culture, and mm-hmm. it – It might sound weird, but I'll put it like this. They're so subscribed to finding underrated talent and building them up over getting guys that are well-established. And, like, I'm going to be honest. After that that, uh, 2020 run in the bubble, they should have traded for a star right away. You should have immediately cashed in on – like literally you should immediately cash in on, on the talent there. And it, it's kind of unfortunate because you you've given the keys to <laughs> guys like Duncan Robinson, who barely sees time. You've given the keys to guys like uh Tyler Hero, who isn't consistent enough to be 
the guy they wanted him to be. And that one year where he was like averaging 21, I don't really see, I don't think he has hit that, uh, hit that margin again. So getting Kevin Love, it kind of just fits in with what they've been doing the whole time. It doesn't necessarily push the needle, but he's still a viable piece for them. In a sense, it, it does level out their depth. It does give them an option to rebound and shoot. Yeah, and stretch the floor, which is another yeah. thing that they desperately needed. Kevin Love, I think Kevin Love wanted, um, like he wanted to go to the Heat because I think he wanted play time. I don't think it was more about like the ring aspect of it or the money thing. It was just kind of, I just want more playing time. I think, I think right. that's what K Love was about. You know, I don't know yeah, how y'all feel he about is that. playing over pretty much whatever backup they have now. Like I he was getting, like, they were benching him in the Cleveland though. Like they was benching him. So I'm like, I don't, is he that? They, had they be also had why. better options, and with the Heat, they have Haywood Highsmith. Like, you know, the, you, Kevin yeah, Love is definitely Dwayne that. Deadman. Yeah, Kevin Love is. Yeah, Miami's dead. You, you, put, you put faith in Kevin Love over guys like Dwayne Deadman at, and now. And now. They, don't even, they, don't even, they don't even have Dwayne Deadman, and they'd still be better with him than Haywood yeah. Highsmith. They got rid of Dwayne, right? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think it's a good, I think it's a good pickup. You know, I mean, yeah. it's just. It's like with the Heat, it's like. You can, they're gonna go to the playoffs, you know. The Heat are always in the yeah. mix, but they, they will go on that late run. Yeah, they, they yeah, will. Yeah, they're, but Kevin Love is just like I don't know, bro. Like I, I don't know what else they could have really gotten. Like I'm, I'm not really too familiar with how how like packed the buyout market was, but it, it, uh, it's it, it, was, man, it was there was some yeah there was in, some... in recent memory probably most packed we've seen. Yeah, it was pretty. Who was there. probably the 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 the, the top three players in in the market? Kevin Love. Okay. Uh, Russ. You put, did you put Russ in there? I mean, yeah. I yeah, yeah. So. You, you throw Russ in there. Yeah. Russ, K Love. He's a Hall of Famer, I guess. If you, really <laughs> you have to. Yeah, I don't. Um, uh, you also had guys like Terrence Ross, okay. uh, Pat Bev, who I think we're about to get into now. Yeah, Pat Bev. Um, yeah, I mean, with, with, with K Love. Oh, like, Reggie Jackson. Another. Yeah, it was. Reggie, it was yeah, it was cool. I, I would say they they got a good pickup for there. I I feel like they they got the best fit for them that they could get right now. But ultimately, like you, you're there. like bro, if they just get that like a really good bit, like a really big piece, bro, like it's gonna really put them over the top. But ultimately, K Love doesn't do that. But it's a good pickup, bro. Like it's a it's yeah. a solid pickup. They like, they United. they honestly their first mess up was not making any <laughs> trades at the deadline. Yeah. That was yeah. their problem. Like the, yeah. obviously, K Love will help you, but. He would make more sense as an addition as as if like they made like a trade in the deadline because if you do that in the heat because they them and the Bulls were one of the teams that you have to make you had to like make a deal in the deadline to really do something when you get to playoff time and even the Nets I mean you gotta go to that point but yeah you know like if you if you really like. It would have been a better move if you actually made a trade and got your team like a lot yeah. better and you looked like a contender yep. going in there. But you know, I guess I guess it helps. I guess Jimmy. it helps. He's better than bat- he, he's better than Haywood Highsmith. I'll think. Yeah. I'll it's, a, it's like I said, it's a nice move. It's a nice move. I think he can help that. The thing is, he could hurt their defense because I know they're usually like the Miami Heat are a defensive team, a good defensive team. But it's like he could kind of get exposed on that perimeter. You know, because he's gonna be he's gonna be sniping from three. Because the thing about Kevin Love, he's gonna give you rebounds. He's gonna be sniping from three. Yeah. But the defense is where I think the Cavs are like, because the Cavs are a good defensive team. So they were like, whoa, 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 we can't. Yeah. It's a risk putting this guy out here because he can get exposed really bad. So, I mean, at his age, you know, he's aging. But we'll move on to um, Patrick Beverly. Um, how do you guys feel about the new pick? What big, does this do for the Bulls you're going Project forward? Pat, man. You talking about Big Pat? Yeah, Project Pat. I don't know. <laughs> what does it do for the Bulls? I mean, you gotta kind of start talking about the Bulls and that you know that 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 conference finals you know talk the 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 that finals talk you know it really puts them <laughs> yeah, over man. the top. Don't, don't oh, like this. But but on a serious note, with that with that signing, it's very similar to the Kevin Love signing, which obviously it's it's a it's a help. But more so, it's it's not gonna get get you all the way. You think it's a help? It's a help because uh, I could be easily proven wrong on this, but it has been reported 
there's been locker room locker room issues with uh Zach Levine and Billy Donovan. And it's pretty much like Billy Donovan and the rest of the roster versus Zach Levine by himself. And it's and obviously I think Pat Bev comes in and hopefully as a guy to kind of be a voice of the locker room, kind of yeah, rally the the defensive guy to get people hype, that kind of guy. Yeah, to to get people on the on the on one note. Uh, on one objective and kind of not let any distractions come uh, come up. So I, it works, but in, in in retrospective, like doesn't really do anything in the future. Yeah, let me let me read this thing. Bulls um wanted this is a from the Woj article. He said uh the Bulls wanted Beverly. He's a Chicago native who attended John Marshall High School to bring some ferocity to the court and locker room. With a 26-33 record at the All-Star break, the Bulls are in 11th place in the Eastern Conference, two games back of the Toronto Raptors for the final play-in spot. And then Beverly averaged six points, three rebounds, and 2.6 assists in 45 starts. Um, So, yeah, like, I like this. I mean, you know what I'm saying? The Bulls are another team that's, like, kind of in the mid-area, but they just got to – with this move, push them a little bit ahead of that. the Raptors. They they can be a a play-in. A play in, maybe fight for that sixth spot, definitely. Yeah. But when you get to the playoffs, that's a different story. But I do think it, it pushes the envelope a little bit to where they I don't think it them. solves all their problems that they needed, but it's like kind of just you know, it just for it, it just reminds me of like the heat move. It was like you should have made a move at the deadline if like you really cared about contending, but at the end of the day, I guess it helps them a little bit. It doesn't. It, it, it got to say, it doesn't help you go from the 11th seed to the 5th seed. Like, you're not going to make that improvement. You're not going to be able to get to the conference finals with uh, with an addition like that. So, it's like, I mean, sure, I guess it helps you. I guess it helps yeah. out the locker room. But you're not really going anywhere. Yeah, I know. Really doing that much wrong. I love a good episode of Who's World, man. Make sure you guys hit that like button for us. Um, next up, we'll we'll drop anytime NBA news happens. You know, we'll be back and forth with uh, Mets Kingdom and uh, Hoops World now. But this Hoops World thing is really fun. You know, I love talking NBA with my guys. Appreciate you guys again. Hit that like button. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok, Hoops World Zero. Appreciate you guys. Shout out to y'all.